Hello once again Star Wars Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. Check out all my videos on YouTube, like, subscribe, share, send out the notifications, do all the things that need to be done to get more subscribers. Uh, check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba and my Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. So, going with uh, a couple of old favorites with some of the Hot Wheels cars, but also some new favorites with the 12-inch um, uh, Hasbro figures that have come out as of recent years. So um, these are the first time that we've done any unboxing with these types, I believe. I've never really come across them. I'm going to come back to these in a little bit. I want to get into what we got going on here with our um, Hot Wheels cars as well as our ship here. Um, let's put these off to the side here. First one we got is the Imperial Combat Assault Tank really like this I think it's a cool um, cool ship I think it was something that was used I'm not hundred percent sure to be honest with you if it was the tank from Rogue One or the tank from Last Jedi but in any case I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking it might have been um, Last Jedi one of the things that was down on the on crate but regardless um, let's see if I have a I just, I just like, you know, I like seeing some of the new kinds of titaniums like, if those who remember titanium, uh, the titanium like um, die cast vehicles. I just really think they're cool. And you know, now, of course, they re release, they re release a lot of things like X Wing fighters and TIE fighters and things like this. But this is the first time I've seen one like this. So I wanted to um, add this to the collection. I can get it out of the plastic. Wow, that was crazy. Comes with a little stand, comes with a little plastic stand. So I think it just and it has yeah all right this is definitely I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess that this is actually the one from Rogue One I apologize and not I did not get that right just because I can tell by the driver in the front. Um, that? oh, that's interesting. Okay, how are you going to stay in? Doesn't look does it like that. I don't think so. It's like it's it sets up like there's a little tiny square bottom and it has a little base but it looks like like this only one way it'll fit oh and there you go okay so cool it's got little guns that move okay so it's got a little bit of uh, articulation if you want but um, stop this right there so you can see it uh, really cool it doesn't look like the tank itself has wheels it looks like it's more supposed to be like a hover tank all right so but awesome Awesome piece. Um, definitely, if you have if you have a display for uh, diecast vehicles, this one definitely should um, be added to it. So because it's definitely unique. All right, let's move on to some of our cars. Let's go. Why don't we? What do you say we go in movie order? Meaning movie order, like the not the order that they were released, but the order of the storyline. So since we have here, we have IG88. We have a. Uh, first order TIE fighter and we have a Y-wing fighter and this is Rose so I'm gonna go in this order starting with the Y-wing since that was the first one we saw we've seen it in both um, Clone Wars and Rebels as well as the new A New Hope um, I wish that they really come out with cars like these <laughs> I just wish I know that they make sample models but it would be really cool to see a car made like this. It's got a really neat um, setup with the the two um, kind of engines that stick out the back on either side. So it kind of has almost like a drag racing car quality to it. Um, plus a little Rebel insignia up in the front right. So really, really cool. Yay, Hot Wheels on that one. Okay, next order, we'll get to the Empire Strikes Back and open up our character car this is actually one of the car ships, car ships line, and the character car is one that just kind of has the look of the character. Okay, and that is IG88, and this is really creative because they they like take the, the different look, something about the look of the character, and they kind of embellish it and put it into the thing. Again, this is, also looks like a drag racing vehicle. Um, it does have IG-88's head kind of in, as the front of the car. This is the bandolier strap kind of going over the engine in the front. 
and then um, it has like left and right looks like almost looks like the guns on the left and the right and then he, you know IG-80 had a longer gun and a shorter gun so they kind of they adhered to that as well um, really really cool piece and again you know unlike the car ships this one's modeled after the character so and it, but it does have another drag racing feel to it very low to the ground and kind of cool stuff so very really really nice on that side okay so we're moving on to first order tie fighter okay now this is actually it says from last jedi but i think that's more because that's the new movie and um this is items that uh, uh, hard to get this thing out of here man. and that is why i have a box cutter to help get this plastic out of come on There we go. That's it. All right. And uh, I do believe I, th I thought I had one similar to this, but it turns out that it wasn't quite the same. It looks like they went for a slightly different design for the car ship for the first order. So as you can see, the center of it has the, um, and again, we'll show pictures at the end. The center of it is basically the ball of the TIE fighter, okay? And it uses the, the um, TIE, wings as uh, kind of like hubcaps almost to give you that design. So it's kind of, it almost looks like it, it could be inverted and go in either direction. But um, it does look like it leans in, leans into the front a little bit more. So pretty cool there. All right, and our final car is Rose. Really great breakout character of The Last Jedi is Rose Tico. Liked her, I liked her, um, sensibilities I liked her kind of down to earthness and um, I really enjoyed just having new characters to fall in love with and, and Rose Tico was one of those she was just a lot of fun she didn't take any any anything from anybody you know the minute she assumed by the way spoilers uh, the minute she uh, thought that Finn was escaping which in fact he was you know she took out her little whatever that thing was like her taser and tased him right away no nonsense you know, dragging them, dragging them off to uh, to uh, to the brig for deserting. You know, but then right away, kind of came. You know, kind of got distracted. Came up with an idea to help to help with the rebels. And and you know, and I get it. You know, a lot of people are complaining like that the Canto Bite story was not really necessary. I disagree. I think I think it was um, it just showed another part of the universe. You know, for one thing, and it introduced the kids, which later on, you know, were the future. And Rose kind of helped do that. So maybe the mission failed, but it wasn't the point of the mission. You know, maybe the mission, there was a side mission um, to, you know, just to kind of expose us, the viewer, um, to this other side of society within um, the Star Wars universe. So I liked Rose for that. I liked that she saved Finn at the end. I didn't see that coming. I really thought Finn was gonna, was gonna say goodbye, but um, it was really cool. So. Uh, this is a character car, just like IG-88, in the sense that um, it just has the color scheme of what she wore or her jacket. Um, it has some gears and whatnot on the side because her jacket did have things sticking in the pockets and stuff, and that's really cool. And then it just has a, um, you know, a little like engine, you know, exhaust coming out the back and off the top, like almost like, like, a, like a data cylinders and just really cool. So yay, Rose. And yay to the Rose Tico car. All right, so now let's talk about these, okay, the 12-inch figures. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I first saw these come out, which has been out a few years, I really wasn't that interested. I didn't want to uh, add a collection. I don't know if you can see it here, but behind me here, kind of on the top where my finger is kind of running, is a whole slew of figures, 12-inch figures from when Hasbro Kenner was doing their line in the um, mid 90s, the collector series and things of that nature. And I have just about all of them. And they, and at the time, you know, when they were coming out, they were certainly a, a welcome, you know, it was great to have them. Um, they, they had, you know, multiple points of articulation. It wasn't just a basic figure, but um, then the licensee of, uh, the licensee got 
passed over to Sideshow Collectibles and eventually with Hot Toys. And now those figures are so far more superior. They're much more detailed. They come with tons of accessories. And uh, just, you know, you look at them and then you look at these and you're like, well, I don't know. Um, you know, the, the, the level of detail because it's more, they're more expensive toys and more high end. And uh, that's part of it. So when these, when these started coming out, I'm like, well, do I want to start collecting these again? I mean, it just seems like, you know, we already have a lot of the ones from like 20 years ago. So, uh, but I actually watched another po another YouTube channel where somebody was reviewing them and I thought, you know, they look interesting. Maybe I will get a couple just to kind of, you know, to have up as part of the collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Ray. Okay, we have um, the Ray Jedi Training Ray. And these, the thing is about these is that there you can find them very easily for between five and seven dollars. And to me, five or seven dollars for a large figure, when you consider the fact that that's about how much the figure, the small figures go for, I feel like that's a pretty that's a pretty good deal. So, from a from a cost standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. And there's also this thing, I, the idea that the very first original figures that came out, the very very first ones were in fact you know after you know along with the three and three quarter inch they did have a series of 12 inch figures and i'll tell you they were you know they're they were highly sought after collectibles now but more importantly than that um you know they were just they were fun you know they they, they only had the five points the, the the head the head spinning and the foot and the arms and legs straight out but they looked really cool and it was neat to have so i thought that that was an interesting um, thing. So, and I and I really like the character of Ray from the Last Jedi. So, I wanted to um, to see what what the big deal was, you know. All right, so she's got um, obviously comes with her lightsaber, Ray's lightsaber, which of course you know anybody who's seen the movie knows that it is now in pieces, two pieces. But that's okay because it um, it definitely told a good story. I've talked enough about my feelings about The Last Jedi. Loved it. Go see it. I actually saw it five times. I saw it a fifth time the other day. So, uh, really excited about that. And caught new things even on the fifth view. Alright. So, you've got now. Now, I will say this. It's It's got your five point of articulation. It's got your leg. It's got your arms. Now, it says it looks like the head's supposed to spin, but I'm not really seeing too much. Oh, there it is a little bit. It's like a very little bit of head spin. But it does have wrists that turn. So you can actually turn, which actually makes things a little easier when you're trying to display it. Okay, so there you go. You have Ray. And I mean, you know, they don't just, they haven't just made, Hasbro hasn't just released figures like Ray. They've also re released all, you know, original trilogy pieces, some prequel pieces, some prequel characters. They've released um, Marvel, you know, some of the Marvel and Avengers and things of that nature. So, you know, obviously it's a it's 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 a long, it's a great brand, and it, you know, it's molded really well. The sculpt is really good. It is more, you know, plain statuesque. You know, you can't really do much with it. Other, you know, if it's, I'd rather have it sit flat out, but they do stand well on their own. Okay, so pretty good. Okay, and then we have Kylo Ren or Ben Solo. Whichever one is it going to be? Probably more Kylo Ren. Now, my only issue with this one is that it would have been nice if it came with the mask off or at least the opportunity to take the mask off, but I don't think this one does that. I think it is just the mask. Yeah, it's just the mask. Which again, you know, not the you know for for a seven dollar. Actually, I think this one might have been six dollars. I mean, you know, really for for so little money, you have to you have to figure that that's okay. You know, this is fine. And um, uh, again, he's got the twisted wrists, and he comes with his his uh, his saber. And um, he. Uh, Kind of, you know, to me, it's there's a little bit of a nostalgic uh, tinge with this because you've got kind of the old school, you know, five point articulation figures. It's kind of nice, and it, the um, the uh, lightsabers fit in the hands pretty well. And now, obviously, you can't do you can't do like awesome, you know, 
weird poses. It's basically just standing straight. But no, nonetheless, you, know, you can turn it, get it to be in, in pretty good mode. And his head turns a lot better. You know, ball bearing turn. Okay. So it comes his his um, tunic has kind of got a little bit of a soft soft plastic to it. All right, and everything else is just basically um, just molded. Okay, um, but really cool. And you know, you put them up, they stand easily. Okay, um, for less imaginative, or, or I should say, more imaginative play, um, that these two, you know, can work out really good. All right, and do and and be neat. But for me, for my for my case, I'll probably end up just displaying them right up here on the wall next to me. And um, I don't think I'm going to go and try to backtrack on all the older ones. The older ones, okay. I'm not trying to complete. I'm never a completist anymore. It just doesn't happen. But I do like these, and I do think that they um, they look really cool. The box is very thin, so. To say you're not really saving much room taking them out of the box so if you want to buy them in the box and keep them in the box if you're not plan planning on playing with them they don't really pose very well but then again you can't get with these two characters you can't do much with the lightsabers uh, the lightsabers are just kind of stored inside the box you can barely see them in fact kylo ren was like in front of his lightsabers you couldn't see it at all so if you want to get them so you can see a full-fledged figure with their lightsaber you are going to have to unbox them and um you know put them on display in that sense but uh, really cool. I recommend them, you know, especially if I, I definitely recommend if you're somebody who, you know, is interested in, in collecting, but it's on a limited budget. These are very little money. Um, they, they take up um, not that much room. They're not, they're not the, all I've got to say. Yeah, Kyle is a little heavier than Ray, but uh, they really don't take up much room. They don't take up much of anything and uh, not much in your wallet, not much in your room, not much in your space, in your house. So, I, I highly recommend them. They're really cool. And there's all sorts of different ones. And again, if you want to branch out beyond Star Wars, they have uh, Marvel. I think they've done even other franchises. I think I saw DC had some. So there's a lot of different ones. So, all right. So we have our, uh, let's see, we have our one v die cast vehicle. We have our two character cars. We have our two um, uh, star car, or no, two car ships. And then we have Kylo and Rey from The Last Jedi. Or I guess I think Kylo could have been for I'm from either Last Jedi or The Force Awakens. So, awesome job. Thank you. Last, that'll do it for this episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. Again, check me out on Twitter and Facebook at Darth Tuba. Like, subscribe, share on everything. Um, spread the word. Let people know about the show. You know, we get subscribers trickling in one or two a day, and that's awesome. I don't, I'm, I'm happy with that. You like what you see, spread the word, let other people know. Uh, until we will get another episode up very soon. So until that time, may the force be with you.